Have you sung that one before? Yes, Prabhu, I have. Wow. That, I felt like that could just have gone on and on and on for the whole session. No one would have complained. And uh, Shivan, can I tell you something? Your drumming has progressed from just being good to being hot. <laughs> Thank you, Prabhu. <Brody. laughs> I mean, it, it's hot, man. Your drumming starting to sizzle. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he has been learning from me, so obviously. Yeah, I mean, that goes without saying, you know. There's just some, there's just some things that don't need to be stated. They're so obvious. <laughs> <laughs> so what 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 do you have to share with us from the past week? Start with the Sharma household. <clears throat> Well, we'll my on. tests are coming up, uh, like AP exams and everything. So it's just been studying for that mostly. And so it, it'll go all of May, most like all my tests. So that's that's all I've been up to really this week. AP means college courses? Yeah, yeah. So AP is short for advanced placement, I think. So, so what grade are you in officially? So I'm in 10th grade uh, right now. And you're already taking college course. That's at least four years ahead of where your peers are, right? Yeah, m mostly, I guess. So four years from now, when you graduate high school, you'll also, you can you can go to your high school graduation one day, and then the next day you can go to your college graduation. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, bro. <Brody>, hopefully. <laughs> what about? Shivan and she and uh, uh, Kapil and Vinita, anything? Um, uh, I took my test too, and I got the results. Um, and out of four, four is above proficient. So um, I got and three, three is proficient, two is below proficient, and um, one is like you're bad. So um, I got three point nine on one, and then the other one I got three point seven. Wow, amazing. And it had nothing to do with your brother, right? <laughs> it was all you. <laughs> Congratulations. Keep it up. <laughs> Kapil Vanita, anything? A very exciting week overall. Uh, an action full week, I would say. Uh, things uh, in the family back in India are improving. And then also helping some friends here and back in India. Uh, so. I think a lot of time with uh, some good friends this week. Excellent, excellent. As uh, Surabi, do you want to share anything with us from the past week? Uh, sailing along, Prabhuji. I'm reading Gita. I'm on sixth chapter, verse three, uh, but still the chapter fifth is not gone from my head. So I'm going back and reading again and again, and written some notes and all that and uh, waiting for this class to happen so I can get little more insight, little more, more wiser. And my kids will be out in two weeks, but I'm not happy about that. I want them to be in the school so I can have little peace of my mind. <laughs> so you won't have so much time in two weeks. You'll have to be ferrying kids around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that's, uh, 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 Arjuna said, uh, Krishna, tell me, Tell me more. Tell me more. I can't. I never tire of hearing the Gita. He says you can repeat it again and again and again, and I'll never, never, ever come to the end of it. And all of our other activities, 
uh, are successful if they whet our appetite for hearing about the Bhagavad Gita. So the fact that you're hearing the Gita so intensely means that whatever else you're doing, it's working, it's successful. Yeah. yeah, it's not like other books when I read and I just want to finish it to go to the end. It's like every single verse is so powerful and to absorb uh, the whole thing, it takes time. <laughs> You're absolutely so I'm not right. In yeah, not in hurry. No rush, no rush. Ajay and uh, Lakshai, anything to share? Um, this past week for the for six days I've been swimming swimming when I don't hear you very well. Oh. Um for the past six days I have been swimming for one and a half hours and yesterday I um well I stirred the uh food and I did something for the halwa with again stirring it. That's you swam? I, Did you say you swam for one and a half hours? Not that much. I want to do more. That's Did good. You one and a half hours or not? I did. Well, that's amazing. You're you're in tip top shape. Swimming is a good sport. You can do it all your life long because there's no impact. Good job. How about your dad? What did he do? Or what happened to him? <laughs> So, you know, from last last week, I was on the production call, 24 by 7. A lot of stress was there. And then uh, basically, I wait for Saturdays because that is the best day for me because I spent a lot of time, a uh, lot of time in the sense, uh, basically six or seven hours in the temple. And I feel so much... Uh, energy so much positive attitude so much positive energy around my body that i take it from there and continue for the whole week it's true if you go to the temple on uh, saturday you'll see ajay everywhere he's full of energy full of energy you and, see uh, him in the kitchen you see him in the kitchen and you run to the temple and for some reason he's already in the temple how did he get there before you you don't even know but it's true. He's just full of energy. Yeah. Uh, Pro, he, Ajay Prabhu also started bringing a signature dish. Uh, ah. <laughs> Pro, that is unbelievable. Seriously, I think that is a good plug for everyone who is listening to us on Facebook that our prashadam is always next level. But on top of that, when we started getting your signature dish, it is next one. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hello. So before coming in there, I uh, I I have to prepare that. So and uh, a feeling behind it, it is, is like that. Uh, I'm full of positive energy. There's some some kind of energy comes in at 3 8 p.m. every week uh, on Saturdays, and then I and then my kids also starts saying, "Go to temple. We are going to go to the temple. All those things are there." So, those things are there and then uh, then uh, basically what I try to do uh, uh, the whole week is uh, apart from our work basically when we are not in the call I used to have this uh, Bhagavatam uh, from ISKCON I used to listen a lot uh, uh, every day around about four, three to four hours and that also keeps uh, the sense of uh, positiveness uh, inside uh, your uh, wherever you live, and then uh, it gives a positive energy to to the kids also. Thank so, you, thank you very much. Thank you. thank you, Britta. I'd like to hear about whatever you have to say, and could you at the end share us your poem? It's such a wonderfully written poem called <laughs> Sham. If you have it at hand, I'd like you to conclude your comments by sharing that poem with us, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, I could do that. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous, but I could do that. <laughs> um, I've just also been, um, uh, we're testing at our school too. So all the kids that have a lot of mental stress right now. <laughs> 
and it's it's funny because they're like why are you guys making us do this and we're like we're stressed out too <laughs> like they're testing oh just food. academic tests not covid tests academic no tests. yeah just academic tests yeah okay. every it's testing it's testing time in the state of utah for everybody so they're doing like the rise tests and um everybody gets a little um high strung about that so We've been concluding the day with a lot of outside time, <laughs> which has been nice. Yeah. Good, good. And then I have just been um, writing a little bit. I started rereading um, the Krishna book because it's been a while since I visited this one. And um, it was mentioned a whole lot in the Swami, the strange land. So I thought I would come back to it. That's nice. Nice. <sighs> And along those lines, for some or other, we got to chatting about clouds and the, the beautiful bluish black clouds over the Wasatch Mountains. And I don't know whether you wrote it this week or you, whether you had written it in the past, but Britta sent me a copy of this beautiful poem about Krishna's color. And I wanted, I wanted you all to hear it today. No, <laughs> okay, no need, I'm so nervous. No need to be nervous. It's excellent. And it's totally devotional. Yeah, it's a, I think it was you, actually. I can't even remember how long ago, but you were talking about how, like, we don't have a word for Krishna's color in English, um, but you said that it was, like, the closest thing that you could approximate it to is, like, the beautiful blue-black of a monsoon cloud, mm -hmm. and, and that was just so beautiful and poetic that it just stuck in my mind forever, and so whenever I see those big, beautiful cumulus clouds coming over the mountains, I just can't help but think of him. <laughs> I'm so the same you, way. you were like, you should write, and so I started doing that, and um, that was one of the very first ones I wrote, because I always think of him when I see those beautiful clouds, so um, let me just pull this up, and I'll read it. In case you haven't guessed, the title of this poem is Sham. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so here goes. <clears throat> I see you in the shape of every rain cloud, beautiful cerulean form of Hari's hue. Every spring they roll over the Wasatch, smoke blue, strewn across the sky, the promise of water, the deluge, the moisture, the relief. Tender shoots of grass and buds explode. Birds serenade the sun, Petrichor fragrance rising up from the soil, heaven sent. First and farthest and ever present, life breath, appa, symphony of all sound, shuddering the firmament in a lightning rush, thunder, sigh, respire, mercy. Sometimes I feel faint at the beauty the astonishment of awareness of your many nascent forms, ever so much in these great cirrus and stratus clouds. Every rainy day, I smile and am humbled and shaken by you. Shyam, shyam, shyam. Oh my God, I think I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> that was just wonderful. My gosh, what did about Huddy bull. If anybody wants to say that, it, I, unmute yourself. Huddy bull. Awesome. That is, that is the beauty and the quality of a devotee, and uh, and I think it it also goes very well with the theme that we are going to discuss today, that only a devotee can see Sham or Krishna in everything possible, and then on top of that, the ability to describe it also comes from Krishna. So great job, Madhavi. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. You just raised the whole bar so high now. I don't know what we're going to do to follow that. Rob, you have anything to share with us today? Thank you, Prabhuji. Um, yeah, that's that's definitely a hard act to follow there. <laughs> that was beautiful. Um, no, it's been a it's been a fairly good week. Um, things have been really busy now that the weather has turned and spend a lot of time outside with nature and with plants and flowers and vegetables and it's just been uh it's been really good to be outside doing that kind of stuff instead of being cooped up inside so i'm very grateful for the weather change and um, i thank krishna for the job that i have that allows me to work with nature so much krishna says of seasons i am spring so we can see that and feel that thank you very much for that govinda day if you just jumped jumped in amongst us what are you bringing with you of import nothing of import 
Um, I'm really just soaking in the, the images from that beautiful poem. And uh, I, you know, like all good poetry, it's something that really needs to be meditated on. You don't just read it and get it and move on. And uh, um, beautifully done. Thank you for sharing that with us, Britta. We'll have to find some means of publishing that with the author's permission at some point. <laughs> so everyone can commit it to memory and read it repetitively and relish it over and over and over again. You can't just eat I was um, yeah. I, I was visiting for the first time. Um, I haven't seen him, I don't think, in during the whole pandemic. A very good friend of mine who lives up in the avenues. And during the pandemic, he had uh, planted a brand new uh, flower garden. And it was in full bloom, uh, beautiful tulips. And um, I had a little conversation with him and I, in which I was just admiring the flowers. He's not particularly re religiously oriented. Um, and I said, uh, you know, I was just looking at that. It looks like a beautiful painting. It just looks like a beautiful work of art. And then there was kind of a pause and I said, um, and when there's beautiful art, then there must be an artist. Did he get it? Oh yeah, yeah, he got it. And uh, you know, it was just, it just seemed like one of those moments where you can just see uh, the, the glory of God in nature, how beautiful it can be. I mean, when you look at those flowers like that, it's really, it becomes an undeniable fact and it's beyond words, it's beyond argument. Either you see it or you don't see it. And I think there are moments of just seeing it. Prabhupada said the single flower by Cezanne, which has no fragrance, it has no, it's only one, one dimensional or two dimensional, will sell for 10, $15 million at auction in Sotheby's. And yet Krishna makes millions and millions and millions <laughs> of such flowers and millions of species with multi dimensions and texture and fragrance. And nobody, nobody gives any reward or any thought or credit to God. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. <laughs> Let me just briefly report on our week and then we'll go back to Ishan and Kapil for our verse today. Um, we, we decided, you know, it's been in my mind as, as I've been greeting people, I've been telling them that, that the temple opened. The first thing I tell people when I do a tour is the temple opened in June of 2001. And, you know, then I say, wow, you know, we're coming up to our 20th anniversary here next month. And so that all just sort of, I don't know why, because we, we had a wedding on Friday outside. They use a lake stage. It was a beautiful, beautiful wedding. Hundreds of people here, beautiful atmosphere, spring mood. And, and it just came to me, yeah, we, we should have our 20th anniversary of the opening of the Spanish Fort Temple on a, on a Sunday evening and, and, and do it outside with speakers and dance performances, continuous free prasadam, and uh, have continuous kirtan on the inside of the temple. It just all, it just all sort of came together in a vision to me. And then I, I, I texted Dinesh, Dinesh is, uh, the key figure in the community that really made it happen, donated generously and got And I said, will the 27th of June work for you? He said he and Calvin will probably be traveling on 27th. So when, and he said, but the 20th would work. And so I said, okay, the 20th it is. So of course we're gonna have Dinesh as a speaker. We're gonna invite other members of the Hindu community as well as the Mormon community to speak. We'll invite Sarika and uh, uh, maybe Divya as well as Sonali at least one of those three groups to do a, a presentation. We'll have Jai Krishna and invite uh, Govinda da Dave. We hope you can organize some kirtans in the temple room. At first I thought it would start from three till eight. And then I thought, well, it's a little hot in the end of June at three o'clock, so four. And then I thought, well, it might still be hot at four. So now our thinking is five to nine. Uh, June 20th will be one of the longest days of the year, so it'll be light until like 9.30. So there's no need to start it at three or even four. I think five would be a good, a good starting point. So if you all endorse that idea and give us your blessings, 
we'll make it official and open up an event page on our Facebook. <laughs> Kabuji, I am in and also I would like to uh, tell for this event and for the holy that I am ready to volunteer wherever you want me to put it. I'll give my 100%. Thank you so much, Jai. It'll be two successive weekends, the holy on Saturday the 12th in Salt Lake City and then uh, eight days later the opening of the temple. So there will be a lot of volunteerism to do. So thank you very much, Ravi. Jai. So we'll go back to Kapilji and his two sons uh, to read us the verse, the purport, and make open up with comments. Today we are reading from uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, second chapter, 32nd verse. Yatha hi avahiti vahini darushu ek savayo nisho nane bhati vishvatma Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Swami Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. The Lord as super soul pervades all things, just as fire permeates wood, and so He appears to be many varieties, though He is the absolute one without a second. I'll just read a few uh, lines from the purport as well. Report, uh, Lord Vasudeva, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, by one of his plenary parts, expands himself all over the material world, and his existence can be perceived even within the atomic energy. Matter, antimatter, proton, neutron, in all these, one can perceive the manifestation of the Paramatma feature of the Lord by proper spiritual culture. As from wood, fire can be manifested, or as butter can be churned out of milk, so also the presence of the Lord as Paramatma can be felt by the process of legitimate hearing, chanting of transcendental subjects, which are specially treated in the Vedic literatures like Upanishadas and Vedantas. As I said that uh, this goes very well with the theme and thank you, Brita Mataji, the way you shared your experience with Krishna. We want to hear it. We want to recite it time and again and remember it. It was so powerful. Uh, Govindaya Prabhu, when you said that if there is this fine art, there's definitely an artist. And then Charu Prabhu complimented by saying that often when we see an artist, they have a stereotype or there's a particular USP that goes well with this artist. But what to talk about this artist who like every 50 miles, you see the change in art. You see the change in his creation, both matter and non-matter. So as I said, as Rob Prabhu said, it's very hard act to follow. I'll just read a few sentences from the seventh chapter uh, of Bhagavad Gita. The title is Seeing Krishna in Everything. No truth exists beyond myself, so do not be misled. For everything is strung on me as pearls are strung on a thread. I am the taste of water and light, the moon and sun. I am the sound of Om and all the strengths in everyone. I am the fragrance in the earth, the heat in raging blazes. I am the life, all that lives and the penance of all the sages. And it is such a powerful chapter that almost forces you to see Krishna in everything. So that is from my understanding uh, of this verse. Kapil, you just muted yourself some or other. I'm just saying that uh, that's my understanding and I was just asking Ishan if he has anything to add. He's saying hard act to follow. <laughs> <laughs> Prabhupada says that the main difference between a human being and an animal uh, is that the animal can't hear. He can't hear transcendental subject matter. You can be saying to him, Komara mochara bhagnad parma bhagad dudabhama pita And the animal is just asking, is he talking about food? Is he going to give me food? Is this a, is this a subject matter food? What sort of food? You know, can, when's, when's the food coming? So the, 
the animal cannot hear about the absolute truth. He cannot hear properly and attentively like, say, Sarabi. Um, Sarabi is the Sarabi human, but the Sarabi cow can't hear about the absolute truth. And so if we are indeed to become humans and capitalize on the human form of life from which we're meant to go back to home, back to Godhead, the Vedic aphorisms is tad vigyanatam sa guru me bhigachet samit samini sarukcham brahmanishtam. One must. It doesn't say one can or one has the option or if one feels like it. But Prabhupada says the Vedic injunction is if you have a human body and you want to fulfill the potential of a human form of life and turn this human body into a spiritual eternal body, then you have to hear from a bona fide spiritual master. You have to. You must. Prabhupada says it's not optional. Just like you think of wood. Let's say you're out in the, in the winter and it's cold and unless you light a fire, you're going to die. So you can't call the fire from within the firewood. You can't do that. It won't work. You'll still die of cold. There's only one way that you can, there's fire within wood, but there's only one way to bring it out, and that's to bring fire externally. So you've got, if you're ever going to go hiking in the woods in winter, make sure you take some matches with you and make sure they're in a plastic bag. Because if you don't have matches, you would be surrounded by wood. Reminds me of that poem. He said, Oh, I'm surrounded by an ocean of water, but not a drop to drink. <laughs> the water doesn't do him any good because it's all salty. So you can be in the forest and there's so much fire present. You're Literally, you're surrounded by fire because every piece of wood has fire within it. But if you don't have matches, it's not going to do you a bit of good. You're still going to freeze to death. So the fire within us has to be ignited externally by the fire of the spiritual master. There's absolutely no other way. And this isn't being narrow-minded or dogmatic or fanatic. It's just a practical point that only fire can bring out fire. So only a lover of God, only a practicing lover of God can bring out the dormant love within you. And how did he get to be a lover of God? He or she heard in their turn from their guru as well. Comments, additional thoughts and insights. Oh, it, it's like coronavirus. You have to get it from someone, but it's a good <laughs> infection. No, that, that's not a not totally joking point. It's really, it's a good infection. You have to catch it. Uh, only someone who has the, the quality um, of transcendental knowledge, whoever has, uh, who, who is a pure devotee, can actually light the fire that uh, is latent within everyone. And you, I mean, good to know, good to know that you really can't uh, self generate. You really need to have someone who is willing to take you by the hand and who will give you the instruction and can actually give you the knowledge that's necessary to self-realize. You know, we have a person, I won't mention any names, but he's a nice fellow, um, very moral, very upright. He teaches yoga one, one day a week at the temple. And at first I started going to his yoga classes and he would chant, uh, Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Deva Maheshwara, Tajmai, Sri Guru. And, uh, and then, and then he, would say, uh, he would chant, Jai Bhagavan, Jai Bhagavan, Jai Bhagavan. And I'm thinking, yeah, this is good. This is good. Yeah, Jai Bhagavan. Jai. But then uh, he starts saying that you don't have to look to any external force as Bhagavan. You're Bhagavan. Everything you need is contained within you. Uh, so you, you don't have to take assistance or shelter of any other source. You don't have to have anyone else as a crutch or a guide or as a mentor. You just have to tap the light, the truth, the knowledge which is in, within you. 
And and that's you know I mean we we also say that but but we say that there are two souls within you. Here's the individual soul, which is one ten thousand size of a tip of a hair, and then accompany the individual soul is the Lord of millions of universes who knows everything and who can negotiate our way out of this material world. So when you say you don't have to resort to any other person or depend on, you know, I just kind of cringe, you know, and I stopped going to those yoga classes because I felt like I was hearing something which was really off, you know, which was really off. Mm -hmm. I don't think that I can, if you're in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, you know, what he's saying is basically, you don't need a helicopter, you don't need the Coast Guard, uh, just just grab yourself, just grab yourself by the back of your shirt and pull yourself up out of the ocean. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> so I thought I thought that while it's 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 not untrue to say that everything you need is within yourself, it is untrue to say that you are everything and complete and self-sufficient. I think that's untrue. Yeah, I would have to agree with that one hundred percent. Probably, <laughs> but um, I mean, it, like, so as a young person, I don't know why exactly I was drawn to poetry, but it's just been something I've always been fascinated with. I love words, and they they ignite something in me. I just absolutely love the sound of Sanskrit. I think it's so beautiful. Um, but when I was younger, like I, I would say that most of my poetry was really kind of bad. <laughs> It wasn't without like my teachers and the, the people who helped me like fine tune that and dial it down that it got better. And then like by having association with the devotees, like all this stuff that I found inspiring, it was like, oh, well, that's why. That is why it's inspiring and that who is who inspires it. And when that came through, it just became so much better, like almost effortless. It feels like it's not hard now. Like before I used to have to just like really wrangle the words down perfectly. And when I think of Krishna being in everything and part of everything and we're all part of him, but he's also outside of us and he's the thing that animates this all. Like, it's just so easy to find inspiration everywhere. you know. <laughs> and it's not difficult to describe it because it's just everywhere you look. It's like um, Govinda Dave was saying with the flowers. <laughs> You can't look anywhere without seeing him once you know he's in everything. Excellent. The Christian, in fact, is the source of all creativity. Wherever we see great art or great poetry, it's always spiritually inspired. Uh, always comes from uh, the extra uh, prescience of the Lord within the heart. <clears throat> your, your comment reminded me of a verse here, a 32nd verse, just a little bit further on in the Bhagavatam, ninth chapter, third canto. Yadate sarva bhuteshu dadashu agnim ivastitam pratichakshita mam loko jahi tarya eva kashmalam. Um, this is Lord uh, Brahma asking Krishna, how, how am I not to forget you? I want to live my life in light and not in darkness. I want to live my life conscious of your presence everywhere and not in unconsciousness or separateness. So how do I do this? What's a technique? Now Krishna directly tells him, Yadate Sarva Buddhishu. You'll you see me always at all times, Sarva Buddhishu. You see me within all living beings, the flea, the ant, the grass, the tree, the fish. Um, everywhere there's life. Krishna tells Lord Brahma, you learn the art of seeing me within. How? Dadashu agnam ivashtitam. Dadashu means wood. Shtita means situated and agnam means fire. Think of me within all beings just as you think of fire within wood. Wherever you see wood, wood may be different shapes. It may be different sizes. There may be pine. There may be redwood. There may be oaks. There may be maple wood. Different species, you might say. Different categories of wood. Different um, shapes of wood. Uh, different ages of wood. But whenever we see wood, we can easily envision the fire that's within that wood. And so Krishna tells Lord Brahma that transcendental vision, that vision which will erase all duality, like Britta was just talking about, uh, reduce and eliminate confusion and, um, 
and, and, and dichotomy, disparity, is the unified vision of seeing Krishna present within all living beings, just like seeing fire within wood. <clears throat> there was a, so I was watching, I actually forgot what context, I think it was in like my photography class where we watched this video in which the, the person kind of gave this curve of like confidence and like knowledge about the subject matter, right? And so she said that when you have very, very little knowledge about the subject matter, your confidence is actually at the peak. And as you learn more and more about it, your confidence starts to go down and then it starts to come back up once you feel like, you know, you've started to become an expert. And the, the example she gave, gave is that like on our phones, <clears throat> we can take a photo, right? And all of a sudden I know, okay, this one button takes a photo and all of a sudden I'm a professional photographer. Like I can go out and I can start shooting, uh, you know, whatever pictures, but more and more as I learn about different rules, different, you know, like formulas, different types of lighting, different settings and so forth. I realize how much there is to actually learn about this. And then the more I learn, you know, like the more it comes to that um, point of like full confidence. And I noticed this in my own like Mirdung playing I started out, all I had was just the Merdung. I didn't have any knowledge. So I just started playing on it, came up with my own beats and I thought I was really good, right? Cause like I came up with these beats they sound really good to me when I like, you know, listen to that, like listen to my playing in somebody else's kirtan sounds really good. And as soon as I like, you know, one day a devotee came up to me at a temple, he was, you know, he was just traveling and he told me like, hey, you know, like you're playing this wrong and you should go learn this type of beat. Here's these videos. And then as soon as I started learning, okay, you know, there's different sounds, there's different mantras that you have to play on the mudang. There's different, you know, techniques. My wrist was locked up and that kind of stuff. And then you get to learn more and more. And then you realize how like far behind I am. And the only way I figured that out was by external help, right? It didn't come from inside me like, oh, my head, wrist technique is wrong or my, you know, I'm playing, my playing is wrong. It didn't come from inside me, even though, you know, like, some wrist techniques I have mastered now, there's obviously a lot more to learn, but you know, that didn't come from inside of me. Somebody else had to help me say like, you should go watch these videos so you can master these techniques. And that's, you know, that's obviously helped. And thank God Shivan has you as a brother. <laughs> wow. <laughs> where would he be without you? <laughs> Just as where would you be without your teachers? Where would Shivan be without you? <laughs> and I think what you're all saying too is that um, there, there's a fire within us. The, 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 the person who never wants to re forget Krishna, like Lord Brahma, sees that the fire, there are different bodies, different sizes in it, but the fire is one. The fire is of the same quality. Wherever you find fire, you find light and heat. So similarly, Wherever you find devotees who have the vision of Krishna being within all living beings, you also have, just like with fire, you have light and heat, you also have knowledge. The devotees are on a higher level of knowledge than most people because they know the difference between the soul and the individual soul. And they're also detached. They don't care to chase after the Lord's shadows in the form of this material energy. They want the substance. They want shelter at the substantive lotus feet of Krishna. And when you make Krishna your goal, what you're doing is you're connecting the fire within to the fire of all knowledge, of all creativity. And so it, when, you, when you took advantage of those teachers and when Britta started reading more about Krishna consciousness, then the fire that was within started connecting and interacting and interpreting and beautifying the external world. You see it all in connection with Krishna, with Syam, you get an integrated view and then fragmentation, confusion, um, creative log jams just don't happen anymore. And the reason for this clarity that comes from recognizing the fire within, connecting our individual fire with Krishna's fire is that creative potential explodes in art, in architecture, music, drama, cooking, 
cuisine, dancing. It explodes in every area. We begin to express ourselves to the creator with the talents and abilities that he already embedded within us. And as we do that, as we make that connection with Krishna, the connection with Krishna always has the pure Victoria effect. Just like if you, just like you're talking about COVID. If you, if you spend enough time outdoors, you won't get COVID because the sun purifies. It, it purifies impure things. If you have COVID, studies have shown that if you, if you recuperate outside as much as possible, the symptoms will be reduced and the disease will go away much more quickly. And so when you avail yourself of the sun of Krishna, when the fire inside connects with the fire outside, the result is that all of your the dirty things within your heart, all the things which cause confusion, disorientation, the things which are holding you back are destroyed by the fire of transcendental knowledge and the fire of devotional service. This is confirmed in the 37th verse of the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, where Krishna tells Arjuna, Yatay dom shi samida gir bhajmasat. Bhajmasat means ashes, the fire of devotional service, the fire of transcendental knowledge turns to ashes, kurute, all the actions of your sinful activities, gyanagni sadra kamani, just like fire turns wood to ashes, the fire of knowledge and presence of Krishna within everyone's heart burns to ashes all the results of one's past sinful activities. <clears throat> Not only, and, and it actually explains in the purport, there, there are five stages of sinful activities. Can anybody guess what some of them are? It's, it's not only turning the result that the, your, your, the ones that you've, you've performed, but it's actually also preempting the sinful activities that you would have performed had you not been in Krishna consciousness. Um. One of those five simple activities I'm guessing is gambling. That's how they manifest. Yeah. And the one is intoxication. Um, uh, having something not very well with uh, another gender of yours, which I'm not going to say what it is. Um, the next one is sl animal slaughter. And that's all I remember. One more. Intoxication. Intoxication. Thank you very much for that, Lakshya. And uh, the 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 the, the, chorus, the, the um, correspondent of that in terms of a timeline is that the fire of transcendental knowledge, the fire of acting as one should act in the service of the Lord, it burns up the reactions to impious activities, it also burns up the reactions to what else? What other type of activities? It burns up the reactions of impious activities and it also burns up the reactions of what other category of activities? Pious, pious activities. Pious activities. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because both of them cause us to come back into this material world, doesn't it? You, you come back to suffer the negative conquests of your imp, uh, negative consequences of your impious activities, but you also have to come back to enjoy the consequences of your pious activities. So either way, you're basically coming back to suffer birth, death, disease, and old age. So Krishna's mercy is such that devotional service burns up the reactions of anything that doesn't give you total and complete release from birth, death, disease, and old age. Now, the things that hold us back are sins in the making. That means sins that we're maybe thinking about or inclined towards, but we haven't planted the seed yet. So devotional service preempts that. It changes our consciousness so that we don't end up doing that to which we are leaning. So it actually takes away 
the results of sins which would have come even in the future, which is amazing. It also burns up the reactions of sinful deeds, which are fructifying. In other words, we did something and they're in the process of germinating to produce a positive or negative result in the future. That's also negated by the fire of Krishna consciousness. And then there are reactions that are mature. They're gonna, they're coming today, folks. <laughs> they're, they're knocking on the door. It reduces them, it, it eliminates them, or at least reduces them significantly. And then at reactions already achieved. In other words, you already got the reaction to a sin and it might be prolonged. It might be in the form of a disease or an economic setback. So it mitigates the result of a action, a karmic reaction in which you're already experiencing, you see. And then the last one, is reaction a priority. And that's even, even before you think of it, you don't, you end up not thinking of it because you're thinking of Krishna instead. So pretty, pretty much freedom across the board to go back to home, back to God in. All based on seeing the Lord, remembering the Lord as being always present like fire within would. What are your thoughts, Sarabi? A lot of these verses are in the third and fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, also third and fourth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So it might have been areas that you've covered in your studies. <laughs> so I resonate with everybody, Brita, Prita, Kapil Prabhuji and Govind Bhakta Prabhuji. So last time we were um, Somebody said, one wonder, we wonder. So Utah is the right place to wander and wonder. When you go alone to any tracking, um, you stop, if you pay attention to the nature and all that, you will say, no, 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 no. It is not possible without somebody who is beyond our reach, beyond our imagination, beyond, 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 somewhere there. It's not possible. And I was, I came across, maybe Brita knows about it, the hypro. And there were like one passage, four or 10 lines, and it will tell you about the body, whatever subject you choose. And I came across reading, like I used to read with my son and heart and kidney. And I was like in awe, I was awestruck thinking like we create one computer app and we think we did something great and achieved but you think inside and that one particular one only one organ of our inside body is so complicated it's not possible not possible without the higher energy over there krishna <laughs> i love your animation you're you're feeling it you're you're excited about it. That's fantastic. But let me ask you this. If if Krishna tells Brahma to see him everywhere, just like fire and wood, wood may be different, but fire is always the always one. So we're we're one in a sense. We're we 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 you know we manifest ourselves as individual living entities like fire through wood. So then someone could argue that God is spread everywhere. He's fragmented, he's in every living being. But how do we understand that he's still one? He's, he's different. He's in so many forms and shapes. But how do you understand that he's one God and, and don't end up worshiping God in all these many different forms? Surabi or anybody else think of an example to explain that? Well, I remember a few classes ago, you had a similar question, not exactly the same. And Ishan gave this analogy of uh, vapor and water, that there's a presence uh, of water in it, but you don't drink it, right? And it's when you have access to the president or the prime minister, do you still focus on the subordinates? And the, the idea and the notion is not to disrespect anyone. It's just that once you understand the absolute uh, and you have the access to your point to some of the other devotees who mentioned uh, through guru, through the association, and then you focus your endeavor on the source rather than 
the pieces that came from the source. Very good. Anyone else have any other examples about how God is at the same time one and many? So another analogy is like water and uh, the waves. So we shouldn't be confusing wave to be a something different. It's after all a water. Okay, that's pretty good. That's good. I like that. <laughs> that's also... basically what I was going to say too. <laughs> Sorry, but oh no, it's fine. I, I was just thinking of like uh, the analogy of like a, a drop of water in a vast ocean. Like even though the drop is a part of the ocean, you don't want to get fixated on the drop. <laughs> because it's just like one tiny particle of the ocean. Right, and the drop can still be extricated, even though it's one with the ocean, it can still be extricated by the beating of the sun on the surface of the ocean. Then it's extracted again, and it becomes cloud and goes over over the air. Some of this, uh, talking about the elements, one example is uh, nabha, nabha. Nabha means the sky. So. You have space, what we call space or the sky or, or air. You can even think of it in its more next, more gross form. So let's say there's a lot of pots sitting all over the place. So air is one or sky is one, and yet it's in each and every pot also. So it has its all pervasive, ineffable form, but it, it also manifests itself in it fills up it it fills up the what would otherwise be a vacuum in each and every pot another example is the moon we all know the moon is one but at night you'll see that same moon reflected on pools rivers lakes buckets of water and you look if you looked down only you'd see so many moons you'd see dozens and dozens of different moons but if you looked up, you'd realize that there's really just one moon. It's appearing as if it were many, but the moon itself is actually one, just in the same way that the air is one, although it can appear in different pots and so on and so forth. So similarly, uh, wood appears different, but within the wood, there's fire, and fire is basically one indistinguishable entity, one integral um, phenomenon, one integral living being. <clears throat> and when fire comes out of the wood, then the wood itself is completely destroyed. So similarly, when a living entity increases his attachment for the Supreme Lord, then he's no longer considered wood or earth or air. He's, he's considered someone on fire with devotional service is considered to be like fire. And as a blazing fire is visible in its exhibition of heat and light, as we said, the living being who is pursuing devotional service under the guidance of a spiritual master is enlightened by knowledge of who he is and his position and his detachment from the material world and acting with knowledge and detachment, then he burns up the cumulative results of his past sinful activities. Govinda, you've been silent for too long now. And that's not allowed. <laughs> um, well, Sum it up. Let's let's do round robin summations now from everybody. And then we'll have your time from Lakshai. Oh, summing up. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, wh what you just said reminded me of one of my maybe my favorite recording of actually listening to Srila Prabhupada explain something. And it's um, when he's talking about uh, why it is that chanting, uh, chanting the Maha Mantra will bring enlightenment because you have this very, very close association with the Lord because the Lord is non-different from his holy name. So if you meditate and you become absorbed, that's me talking. Then what, um, Prabhupada said is that it's like if you take iron, it's iron, but if you put it in the fire, and then Prabhupada said, you take it out and it's fire. <laughs> that's that's the that's the process. That's how you can become connected 
with something even though you're different from it just like iron becomes fire you can become one with the lord if you have complete absorption and can i add one thing um, that just occurred to me in reading uh, just in the verse um a text 32 um that the lord is the absolute one without a second i think every other time i've ever heard that what i've thought is well he's so much greater than everyone else that no one is his peer but i think more literally and more closer to the actual meaning there is that krishna is the absolute one and there is no second there isn't something else there isn't something else because it, it's all krishna did everyone get that that was ama- that's very deep yeah one without really a second that, that that one without a second it doesn't mean he outshines others or that he's above others it means that there are no others there's only krishna there's nothing else and that and that vision is what burns up anything that keeps you in this material world it burns up the reactions of all your sinful activities in five different phases uh, it enlivens you in terms of your talents and abilities art artistry music dance poetry drama it it it, it sets you free to to pursue the glorification of the unlimited lord And you know, the thing is, um, Krishna's fire is always good. Now, in the material world, fire is not always good. I mean, it it can be good. It warms you on a winter day, cooks your food. But it can also be extremely destructive. It has that other side. If you're not careful, it can burn your house down. It can cause a lot of pain and disfigurement. But with Krishna, the fire of Krishna is always good. We've talked about all the immeasurable benefits that come to somebody who awakens the fire of their devotion and connects it with Krishna. There are just so many benefits on so many different levels. It's almost tragic if someone gets a human form of life and misses it. It's, it, it's not almost tragic, it's very tragic. But, but, when, but when Krishna gets mad at the demons and he kills them, he, he burns them up in the fire of his anger. It also destroys their sins as well and gives them a type of liberation. So in the material world, fire can be good or bad, depending on how you use it. But in connection with Krishna, the fire of Krishna is always liberating, whether it's directed towards his good sons or bad sons. The bad sons don't get a loving position in the in the in the intimate company of the Lord, at least not right away, but they do get the the removal, the erasure, the immolation of all their sinful activities. I came across this verse when Krishna was going to kidnap Rukmini in the tenth canto. Krishna says uh, of Rukmini, he says, "Tam aniyasha unmatja rajana pashadan nidhe mat param anavajangim." Edasha Agni Sikam Iva. Agni means fire. So Krishna says of Rukmini, all the kings of the world, they want, they're lusting after Rukmini. And, she, and, and she's, they're trying to force her to choose one of them for her husband. They're all assembled there. They're all wearing their best. They got their guts sucked in and they're posing for her, hoping that she'll choose them. And Krishna's not there. Krishna's not invited she's not given that option but she only wants krishna and so krishna says of her she has dedicated herself exclusively to me and her beauty is flawless krishna uh sneaks into he's the party crasher he's the gate crasher he comes into the arena on his chariot and in full view of all the kings that are lusting after her. He takes her on his chariot and rides out with her (laughs) right in front. They're so stunned, they can't even do anything about it. And many of them, seeing Rukmini in public for the first time, 
seen her beauty, they already fell to the ground. They swooned or they fell off their horses or they fell off their elephants. So Krishna just majestically and taking his time rides out of the arena with Rukmini on his chariot and it takes the warriors a while to like figure out what happened to compute the boldness of it, the outrageousness of what Krishna has just done and then to pull themselves together, get their weapons, get back on their horses and chariot and give pursuit. And Krishna says, he says, I will bring her back to Dwarka after thrashing those worthless kings in battle, just as one brings a blazing flame out of firewood. Prabhupada says here, when latent fire is aroused in wood, the fire bursts forth, consuming the wood in the act of manifestation. Similarly, Lord Krishna boldly predicted that Rukmini would come forth to take his hand, and in the process, the wicked kings would be burned by the fire of Krishna's determination. And being thus burned, they would get liberation of a sort. So however you come into contact with Krishna as a friend or as an enemy, it has the result of freeing you from all sinful reactions. Well, that's my wrap up. How about your wrap up, Kapil and Sons? So I want to thank Britta and everyone else to make it such a very poetic conversation today, uh, starting with Sham. So I'll remember Sham and you gave me another way to remember him. And yeah. would like to have, if you have the soft copy, please share with us or Charu Prabhu, he can distribute uh, among us. So, and it's hard to believe when you said that uh, my initial poems or the poetry was not good. Uh, the poetry is always a very clear expression with all these mixed feelings. There's, these were great words, that too in a great order. So, so thank you so much for that. Uh, my rap, Prabhu, is seeing Krishna in everything. Uh, that is, I think, the message. Sometimes we put so much effort to know about someone. And very loosely you say that, uh, don't worry, I, I know you. But our focus today is, do you really understand me? Do you really understand Krishna? And you cannot understand Krishna unless you start seeing him everywhere. And these were some great expressions and analogies that everyone shared. So I feel blessed uh, that uh, you gave me a lot of uh, uh, clues that I can start seeing Krishna everywhere. I just want to conclude, since it was very poetic, I want to read a couple of lines. Uh, Krishna says, the good, the dark, the passionate, all come out of myself. These modes do not, these modes do not control me, unlike everybody else. I am the seed of everything. From me, all things arise. I am the great man's power and the wisdom of the wise. So that's my rap. Haribo. My main takeaway was what Govinda Dev Prabhu said with the, um, because I did like I definitely when I was reading the purport, right? I, to me, it also came out as like Krishna is second to none, and that kind of vibe, not like the, you know, Krishna is everything and there is no second, which I thought, yeah, that's definitely like uh, a realization I've had, which is. Uh, and I thank you. Thank you. Bro. That was stunning. Thank you, Gobind. So, Rabi, what, what's your takeaway? Um, obviously, seeing Krishna everywhere, that keeps you calm. Second thing, when you were say, um, saying that uh, Brahm, uh, Brahma asked Krishna, um, how should I make sure that I never forget you? So, I remember the uh, same question. Um, when Krishna went to Kunti Maharani and said, ask, like now the war is uh, going to be there and uh, maybe your sons are going to be killed or what do you have one thing um, which you want me to uh, uh, do? And Kunti says, give me the same suffering so I never forget you. <laughs> we often see Krishna more keenly in distress than we do in comfort. You know, we think... We think uh, if I'm in comfort, it's due to my efforts. But when there's distress, then I need Krishna's help. 
Rob, what you have a takeaway to share with us for today? I do. Um, the uh, seeing Krishna in everything, um, the pure devotee sees him in ev everything. And it says in the um, 13th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita that there's a field of activities, there's the knower, and then there's the, the supreme knower, the super knower. And Krishna is, is in all of these things. He's in everything. And to think of him as, as fragmented, I feel is like trying to place a material restraint on, on his power, on his, on his supreme opulence and omnipotence. And why, why does he have to be fragmented to be in everything? He's in everything it, and exists beyond everything all at once. Um, it's a hard concept to grasp, but once I can see that, then I feel I'm getting a little bit closer. Krishna is inconceivable. That's what makes him God. The fact that he's everywhere and separate is what makes him God. And the fact that we're everywhere and not separate, that we can't be in two places at one time, is why we're not God. <laughs> so, Lord, please never dupe me into thinking or calling myself Bhagavan. That's all I ask as a result of today's session. I'm not, I'm not Bhagavan, not by a long shot. <laughs> I need Bhagavan to get me through this. And I'm not, but if I say I'm not Bhagavan, then how am I gonna cry out heartfeltedly for the help of Bhagavan? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Hare. Britta, Britta, do you wanna, you have a takeaway for today? <clears throat> so much, Chaudhra Prabhuji, it's just, um, so I, Anyone who has a gift of any kind, uh, if they devote it to Krishna, I mean, that's what it's there for, you know? <laughs> so, um, and I, I was thinking too, uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, there's this, whoever knows profoundly my divine presence on earth is not reborn when he leaves the body, but comes to me. That's everything that we've been saying today and, and just seeing him in all things my like little tiny way of expressing that it's already been done i mean everything's there in the gita uh, it's just a, this is my personal interpretation but anything and everything has already been said more profoundly with more beauty and it's all there and just trying to you know express that on my own it feels very humbling and obviously all the inspiration is coming from there um the more i read these sacred texts, the more inspired I feel and just see everything all around me as an expression of the Lord. And I don't know, it's hard not to be like just excited to wake up every day to see it again. <laughs> I don't know how there can be depressed devotees ever. It's, I think it's impossible. So just everything that everyone said is beautiful. You know, we've all, we've all sat in front of the fire and just been fascinated. You, you never, you look at fire and it's just endlessly it's just fascinating and, and it's unpredictable. That's one of the things that attracts us to the fire. It's all these beautiful hues and flavors and textures. There's so much variety within fire. Um, it attracts us because it's, it's bright. It, it, it sort of says, look at me, look at me, look at me. And we never get tired of it. And so when, what, what, when you said, I look forward every day, I thought of the newness, the newness of Krishna just like fire is always renewing itself, always transforming itself. It's never the same from day to day. And it can always go here, it can always go there unpredictably. And so Krishna consciousness is, is like that. It's exciting. Krishna is unpredictable. You never know where he's gonna take you. So you need to be flexible. You need to let go and let God and get ready for every day to be a miracle, every day to be a new adventure. Thank you for that. Thank you all. We come now full circle to Ajay and Lakshai. Make any comments, what, what your takeaway is for this, and then please finish out our session today with a, a kirtan a la Lakshai. So what I have learned from the conversation today is uh, Krishna is a realization, and that realization comes uh, by surrendering to him and then the ways which we can uh, 
surrender to him is by chanting by meditation by so uh, by uh, by serving others so it's a realization i purely think about it's a realization and that realization comes in and goes down uh, through you is uh, through all all these uh, three or four uh, ways or three or four tools it's krishna only says uh, when he was uh, the, when arjuna was there in the battleground in kurukshetra he said that uh he was not willing to fight with the uh, with his grandfathers and his uncles and his uh, cousins and at that time krishna says to him surrender to me i will take care of everything you just surrender and do your do your things whatever is expected from you i am there with you so that's the reason uh, why krishna was a sarthi in the kurukshetra we have to just do all these things krishna will automatically come to us and he will create uh, a sense of a bulletproof jacket which we are going to wear and nothing is going to harm us thank you thank you very much for that takeaway lakshay if you have any comments and then go right into kirtan okay thank you um to me i think that i think how to remember um that god is in everything is that how gobind the prabhu said that um there is a artist behind every good painting i think that we are the good painting and the artist is god so that's how i think god is in all of us hari bo hari bo that is the real rap if that's the rap summarize the entire session in four or five words that's what you have done god bless hit, hit the bullseye lakshay hit the bullseye thank you how do i have to do the kirtan <laughs> you can do yeah it. you still have to do the kirtan you know yeah how long uh just you can do it uh, it's 10 to 15 20 30 no no a oh, well. few minutes okay Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 
कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम राम Thank you, Lakshmi. Thank you very much. Thanks to everyone. <clears throat> Govinda Dave, you gave us, I think, the most striking comment of the day, followed closely by Lakshmi. Britta enriched us with her poetic way of expressing things. And uh, Kapil, Ishan, Shivan, the three musketeers there, gave their inimitable contributions, both musically and philosophically as well. Ajay, thank you also for your wonderful service attitude and your enthusiasm to support us. On Facebook, we had Radhe Sham, Jean, three or four listeners at any given time. It's been a wonderfully fruitful, in-depth session. I'm grateful to all of you for helping me to deepen my own realizations and we're all hoping to come to that level 
to which Lord Brahma himself, the creator of the universe, aspires to see Krishna spread throughout everything, everyone, universally. There is none other than Krishna. He's not just greater than everyone. He is the only one. Hare Krishna, Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Hare. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. One note, one reminder, our 20th anniversary at the opening of the Spanish Fork Temple will be, as it stands right now in the planning stages, on Sunday, June 20th, from 5 p.m. until 9 p.m. Lots and lots of wonderful celebratory activities going on. You're all invited. Hari, 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 Bo. Hari, Bo.